Going to another part of VR Sports Power Boat Racing. This time, we're going through that arcade shooter game, except this time we're going through with the Pike difficulty. And you're gonna see how much more hard the game's gonna get from here. It's it's gonna get kind of relentless. So we have four laps now instead of three. And the but the boats are gonna be the same. The boat's not gonna like change at all, really. Except on speed. Ready? I want you to notice how much faster we're gonna be and how much faster everybody else is going to be. So first of all, we're not immediately like getting straight to first beforehand. We are on fifth. And we're kinda of already fine with sixth place. So that's not good. However, they get stuck by that boat. And if I was to hit that boat, I get stuck too. And by the way, there's a car that just drives by and it falls down. If I wanted to, I'd stop and wait and show you the car just dropping off from the side. I'm not going to. Because if I do that, I'm going to get last. Because the AI here is not going to wait for me at this point. As you can see, these two here are just going to go right the fuck ahead without anybody else following up. It's just me and these two now. Everyone else is way behind. So, yeah, that's fun. Another thing you might be noticing is I'm essentially like not like veering down like I was beforehand. I'm not like fucking jumping down. You're noticing that I'm just like staying above. That's because of the fact that I am now essentially, you know, not fucking, you know, letting myself do that whole drop down thing. I am using the R1 button now to essentially keep myself above from dropping down and diving in the water. I'm not going to dive in the water ever again at this point. Now, you can veer your boat down if you wanted to. There's no point to doing it as far as I've told. Like, as far as I've seen, there's no point in doing it right now. So, don't press the R2 button. Just press the R1. However, you don't want to press it too much. If you do, the game has a bit of a punishment for being too reckless with the, uh, the R1 button. And I believe I show it off in this race in particular where things do get quite dumb. Also, you now just saw the animation for that. And it looked unnatural as fuck, didn't it? It just looked wrong. There's gonna be a lot of animations for closing off the fucking one track to another one in a lot of these tracks, but it's gonna look unnatural as all hell. It's gonna look weird. I know it's PS1, I know it's a PS1 game, but it can look a bit better than what I did there. Anyway, we're about to get to the point- yeah, there you go. And the fucking announcer says, nice flip. So, here's the thing. If you spam the R1 button too much while in the air, like I did then, you will end up flipping. Flipping is worse than diving. You don't want to ever flip because you're not going to make it. Okay? There's no point doing things like front flips in this game. I don't think it's even possible here. I think if you flip, you're just on your fucking back and you're stuck on your back. So for the most part, don't fucking flip. Just avoid flipping and Press the R1 button casually. Don't spam it. Don't try to speed run that bullshit. Just casually press the R1 button. A few taps is enough to take care of shit, see? And yeah, that's basically how you handle that. And with all of that said and done, I am now getting first in this race again. So far, we've been going for the exact same track like before, but now we're doing four laps instead of fucking three. We got to go through that other path two more, like another time, like two times instead of the normal path. 
With that out of the way, we're now winner in New York. And moving on forward, we're going to go, obviously, to the next spot we've already done. The first three tracks are going to be the same. I'm not going to change at all. So we're now going to do it with Norway, I believe. Yeah, Norway. And, um, yeah, like, it's going to be the same shit. No doubt about that. Now, to be fair, in commentary-wise, not much for me to actually talk about, because it's going to be the same tracks, and we already know how fucking lazy that is. We will see more new tracks, though. But, um, yeah, this is actually pretty fucking lazy. Here's the big kicker, though. The AI is doing its fucking damnedest to make this a pain in the ass. Beforehand, yeah, it had some, you know, bullshit moments here and there, but the AI was never this ruthless against me. At this point, the AI is gonna be really fine with me. Like, not even like, you know, going right up my ass, you know, being a bit of an asshole. No, it's gonna be fighting. This is where I kind of start questioning if there's really rubber band in play here. Because rubber band does not act as fucked as this game makes it, you know? It doesn't act like really screwy. Like, it's usually like, you know, they go faster you behind you, and then they go slower than you in front of you. But there are moments where the AI still goes slower behind you at times, and there are moments where they're in front of you, and they're either matching your speed or going faster than you while in front of you. It's fucking weird how this works out. And I don't think it's our banding. I honestly feel like there's something else at play. But I don't realize it yet until the new one, until the new fucking tracks. Right now, I'm just fucking, you know, blind essentially to this shit. In fact, this is not a let's play where I took some practice on it. I'm going in completely blind with this one. So, I don't know what I'm in for really. All I do know is that I'm in for some bullshit. And I mean, right fucking there was some bullshit. You couldn't see that, could you? This fucking camera does no favors. This fucking camera is terrible. Also, dolphin. Or whale. It's honestly really cool to see, like, all of these background things and shit happening, you know? It's cool to see if there is an active environment in the tracks. It makes it feel more lively. That's not a good thing I can say about this game. The tracks feel lively. That's more I can say for previous Hydro Thunder knockoff games, where the tracks feel fucking dead and boring and shitty. These ones. They have something to them, at least. It just sucks the gameplay bites the hardest. Because this could have been okay. Anyway, that takes care of Norway, so now we're going to go ahead onward to... What was it? Russia or something like that? It, we're going to go into the next level that we already did beforehand. Look how close they are. A second behind me. Fucking hell. Yeah, Russia. So... So far, I've been going for the same tracks. And noticing the length of the video is... Basically, Ready? twice as long as the last part, almost. There's gonna be three more tracks ahead of us, and they're also gonna be four laps long. And I'm not really going to be ready for any of the shit I'm going to be heading for. Because the tracks incoming after these three, quite honestly, do not play well with the fucking controls. I mean, 
a lot of these tracks, almost all these tracks so far, have not played well the controls at all, really. There might be one track that has played fine, I guess, of the controls, but for the most part, the tracks here do not complement the gameplay. The, the gameplay, the control aspect of this game is so jank and fucked that it makes the tracks so much more hard to navigate than they should be. Because there's a lot of open space, a lot of open space, but turning, just turning at any point is a bastard where it feels like a fucking hallway still. It's like I'm really going for like a tight hallway still because the turning is so shitty. And the game will throw actual tight hallways in and the game can't handle it. It cannot handle small corridor areas. And this track in particular has a small corridor area. I mean, there's a shortcut here. It sucks. Because there's no fucking way you're gonna get inside that shortcut area that easily. Of how goddamn horrible the turning is. And where its placement is. You're not gonna get in unless you hit the wall. Also, so far, it's been like activating on the third lap the bullshit. It's been activating the spots on the third lap. Not here. This helicopter is still there on the third lap. But something did move on the third lap. So we're taking the normal route so far, but then it's gonna change soon. I find it to be interesting how it's not just outright, you know, changing the track again on the third lap. Also, here's that corridor. As you can see, me just being near those walls is fucking with the speed. There is so little space, so little room to keep a good amount of speed going. I have no choice but to hit fucking walls. And the AI is similar on this. They are hitting the walls still. They're slowing down as well. Everyone's getting fucked by that hallway. That bit sucks. Also, the helicopter has moved on the fourth lap, so there is something going on involving the laps and what opens up what doesn't, and I like that a lot. I like that it's opening up gradually here. It wasn't on the first two tracks, it's doing it here. And I appreciate that, because that's good design. I just wish that was, you know, in place more, especially on the controls, because the control design sucks. But yeah, I do make it through and I do win this one, but just barely. You can see that my opponent's right behind me just then, and yeah, there you go. And with that, that is all three tracks we've already done, taken care of. Now here's the thing, it could have ended here. In fact, I thought it was going to end here, considering what's going to pop up pretty soon. Look how close that is. It's always a second behind. So the game's gonna give me this. Congratulations, you're qualified to race Championship Password Cup. Championship is now a mode that's unlocked for us to do. However, we're still going. We're now in Nevada. These are the new tracks that are in Pike. And we'll probably go for them again on the frequency that we have left as well as three more tracks maybe, but right now, Nevada here sucks. Like, watch this. The AI, right off the bat, I'm getting fucked by walls and shit, but look at this. The AI is just not rubber banding over to me now, until they get to this cave. Then they start slowing down. That entire beginning, they were matching my speed. Every boat was matching my fucking speed at the beginning. I don't think we're betting to play here. If anything, 
from what I've been noticing here in Nevada at least, the AI is actually having spots where they slow down. So, there'll be areas where they will go full fucking speed, no frills, like no shits given, they will fucking fly. But then there'll be other spots on the other part of the tracks where they're gonna slow down. They're gonna be fine on other parts of the tracks. Like, they're gonna fucking slow down and wait for me on other parts of the tracks, but on some parts, fuck you, they're flying. They're gonna just go full speed and not care about you. And honestly, that seems to be occurring in every track, and in Nevada, it is super obvious. Like, it's not even funny how fucking obvious it was that the AI was just zooming in and I could not catch up because I'm going max speed and I can't catch up to them on that entire start bit. I could only catch up when I got to the fucking cave here, when I got to that waterfall area, when they started slowing down around that turn. That says a fucking lot about this game so far and how it treats the player. But not only that, this is a fucking turn-heavy track. And that's really bad when your fucking controls, when you're turning on your controls, is so terrible. When you have really bad turning and you're giving the player such a turn-heavy track like this, like a very zigzaggy fucking track, it's really, really bad and obvious. It makes just getting around here a massive pain in the ass to even handle. And then, oh, they changed it. You have to go in the waterfall. There's a path here now. And there's a jump at the end. Great. At this point, you have to look at the mini-map to know where the fuck you're going, to know what's, you know, gonna be happening for you, and to know when to anticipate this shit. But, that mini-map does not help out much. It's a pixelated mess. Like, if it was a single line, that'd be fun. What's going on is that the lines here are supposedly the walls. So... It gives off this really ugly look from the HUD, you know? It gives off this very ugly, like, look for the map there. It looks like it's not finished. There's, like, fucking gaps everywhere on the fucking map. It looks like it is bit crushed to shit, this map. Every map looks like it looks like fucking strain. It does not look like a fucking map. It does not look like a fucking line. It looks like string messed up. In case you're wondering, by the way, I do get first in all of these races. And I'm surprised I got first in every race in this one. Because Nevada really fucked me. And you can see Nevada really fucked me. Look how far ahead this guy is now. The AI has no shits given. When you're at a certain distance, they're fucking going. They're leaving you. It's only when I start getting closer up that the motherfucker starts slowing down at times. And we got close to the finish line too on that part, so I got lucky then. But yeah, that, that fucking map really showcases the issues with this game. And that's only the fourth track. It's really concerning how this game's gonna treat us. And again, we have one more difficulty left to deal with, so... 
there's more waiting for us of this shit. We're not going to England, by the way. And England is not really fun. Now, in case you're wondering, Ready? the uh, the fucking screens for all these maps and shit you've been seeing so far. Oh my god, the AI just bouncing around like that, like instantly. This is England, and England's nice. But I'm not a fan of the zigzaggy shit of it. It's very turn heavy here as well. But what I love about this level the most is the song it has. So far to me, it has the best song of the entire game. Listen. Just, just wait for when it really kicks in because this song goes fucking hard. Just. Here it comes. Fucking hell, man. Whoever did the soundtrack of this game had a fucking field day of the soundtrack. Alright. The most work I felt like was put on the soundtrack because it really fucking kicks. And this song in particular is amazing. I fucking love it. Like. It's obviously very cheap and 16-bit-ish, like very MIDI-ish, but at the same time, whoever did this worked that MIDI sound so goddamn well here. They knew what they were doing with this. And yet, it's put on one of the tracks that I honestly think is one of the worst tracks in the game. At least with the controls in mind. Look at it itself. It's kind of generic too, but it's fine. It's like a country area of England, you know, the Greenland area. And I mean, I'm fine with it. I like the houses and all of it all. I like how there's like a circus tent here as well. But, oh man, the track design. I really fucking hate how zigzag it is. It's really turn heavy, and again, the turn heavy tracks are the worst because the turning in this game is the worst. When one aspect of the controls of the game hurts the tracks themselves because of how bad this aspect is, that's not a good fucking thing. And the turning hurts this fucking game so much. If the turning was not this fucking terrible, I would have been more enjoyed with this game, honestly. But instead, oh god, turn up the D-pad and turn with this jankiness sucks. And also, I'm confused on where to go now. It's not obvious where it wanted me to go then. The fucking track change there was very confusing. So yeah, it's just... Oh my god, I love this song so goddamn much. I don't know if the soundtrack's even on YouTube or whatever, but... Go look for it and listen to it yourself. It's worth it. I'm wondering, I'm pretty sure it is, but I'm wondering if the soundtrack here is the same in the PC version. It is apparently the CD version, like the CD quality. Uh, thing because there is an option to change if you want to change it from like CD quality or not. So this is the this should be the PC soundtrack essentially. And it's fucking good. It's a fucking good soundtrack, honestly. It's those little things in these sort of games 
that make it worth playing them. Even if the game sucks, things like the soundtrack, it, it's a nice little addition to find. Now I have one track left, and... Oh, God. It's it's not going to get any better. And a winner in England. The final track... There are two things that do this game really dirty. Also, that was the first I ever got in any of these. I think England, I... Because I think the song's power really fucking amped me up to get this one done. I think it won me over. Anyway, Amazon's our last level... And there are two things that do the game a bad injustice. One is the turning, and the other one is the collision of the walls and shit. Three, two, one, this track suffers because of that, because the track is narrow. Like, there's a lot of narrow corridor shit in this one. And that's terrible, because... The hit spots, you go near a wall and you slow down. The fucking hit spots of every wall here, of our boats, is fucked. And if you hit a wall, like, you're gonna really slow down and the AI is gonna fucking zoom right past you, no problem. So what if the look of Amazon, what if the look of Amazon is probably one of the best looks? I fucking hate how narrow this is. And what's worse is that it has very tight turns at points while making you do jumps. This one right there, you are more likely gonna hit that fucking wall. Every time you go for that jump, unless you anticipate there being a turn, you are more likely gonna hit that wall at the other end. The camera is also a detriment to the game, and the thing is, I've seen the PC version of its camera. This is a PS1 thing, this fucking camera angle. The PC version's camera is actually a lot nicer. It's not like this, where like 80% of the screen's looking up. It's actually like... Normal when it's got the fucking boat and shit and you can see shit behind you better and all of that It's giving you the distance and anything So the camera in the PC version is better But for some fucked reason the PS1 version They made the camera like this And it's terrible I don't know why I did this. I don't know why They thought this was a good idea because the camera really fucks you over because you can't see below you when you jump and you can't really see behind you that well. And not only that, I mean, I like the environments and shit, I like the look of the map, but there's too much. Like, it's showing too much of the environment against the fucking track itself. It, it's just, it doesn't need to show me this much of the map. Especially since there is a draw distance thing going on. So I can't even see much of the map until it loads in on me. And by that point, like, there is more fucking sky than there is the environment of the trees and shit here, as you can tell. So again, there's no point to the fucking camera this just being at this angle. It's dumb. It's fucking dumb. And also, I really fought against the AI in this one. And the thing is, when I touch these fuckers, I think... Either I drain their speed or they drain my speed. I'm never sure what's going on. But they act as obstacles too, and it sucks. And they can push you. The AI here has no problem pushing you around like a fuckhead. And pushing you in the walls and shit. The AI are dickheads. 
But at the very fucking least, you know, I do make it to first tier because I did one specific thing. Instead of doing what I've been doing so far on that jump, the last three laps, I do this. I angle myself like that so I can avoid the wall. And with that, and not hitting a wall around here, I win first. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is the pipe difficulty, and that is another round of arcade done. That's winner in Amazon. We're always not done yet, because we have one more difficulty left to do with arcade, but we're done a pike for now. And that was normal, by the way. That was normal difficulty. So what the fuck is hard gonna be like? Wait, cheat mode, compact, give mini boats. If the boats are smaller, it might make it, you know, a bit more easier, I guess. But the main thing here, it's the same text, but now it's saying, try racing Barracuda class. Barracuda is our hard. So we already know the laps are going up, you know, three to four. So obviously it'll be a five lap thing, obviously. I hope not, but it probably will be. But the real fear is on how bad the AI is going to be on Barracuda. But we have a low championship race thing here, and we have champions available to us now. I'll be doing that after arcade here with Monohull with Barracuda. So, yeah, next time on VR Sports Powerboat Racing, we're going back to the fucking motor hole for you again, but this time we're ending it with Barracuda with the arrow. Thanks for watching, I'll see you then.